Thanks very much for the opportunity to record this video. I'm delighted to present my joint work with Yana Gallen entitled Informed Choices, Gender Gaps in Career Advice. There's substantial empirical evidence that information matters for educational and occupational choices. When researchers provide individuals with information on the returns to graduating from high school or graduating from college, individuals alter their decision-making as to whether to attend high school and college. There are similar results for college major choice as well as job choice. Information, however, is most often not provided by a researcher, but rather exchanged through informal and private means. One can think about a conversation with a professor in her office or an informal email exchange with a potential employer. This means that information may not be accessible to all individuals. Furthermore, the information that an individual receives could be influenced by that individual's personal characteristics. In this paper, we study whether the gender of the individual who is asking for information affects the information that they receive. To the extent there are gender disparities in access to inform informal information, these differences could help explain broader phenomena, such as gender differences in investment choices, gender differences in health behaviors, or occupational segregation by gender. We conduct a large scale field experiment where college students seek information on careers from working professionals. Using this experiment, we're able to answer the following research question. Does student gender affect the information that students receive about careers? When analyzing gender differences in the responses that students receive, we focus on career attributes that are known to differentially affect the labor market choices of women relative to men. Specifically, we focus on work-life balance and competitive culture. Our main findings are that the responses that students receive do indeed differ by the gender of the student who is asking. When students ask a broad question regarding the pros and cons of the professionals field, female students receive nearly twice as many mentions of work-life balance issues relative to male students. And this is not driven by gender differences in response rates to this question. When students ask specifically whether work-life balance is a concern in the professionals field, women receive substantially more responses relative to men. There is no differential emphasis on competitive culture by the professionals to female students relative to male students. Overall, our results show that work-life balance issues are differentially highlighted to female students even when they do not specifically ask about them. Importantly, this is occurring pre-labor market entry during the information gathering phase. As I'll discuss later on in the presentation, we're doing a lot of work right now to understand the roots of these gender differences in the responses that students receive, as well as their implications. We conduct the experiment on a large online professional networking platform. And we focus on professionals in four fields, law, management consulting, data science, and finance. We chose these four fields because undergraduate economics majors at the university where we're conducting the study tend to go into these four fields post-graduation. The sample consists of 10,000 professionals who graduated from top colleges, work in the student city, and work in one of these four fields. The experiment unfolds as follows. We recruit 100 college students who are interested in learning about these fields, and each student contacts 100 professionals. Each professional receives one message, so a total of 10,000 messages are sent. 
Importantly, we randomize whether a professional receives a message from a male student or a female student and the specific message that they receive. This allows us to causally identify the effect of student gender on the responses that students receive. Each student contacts 13 data scientists, 28 finance professionals, 33 lawyers, and 26 management consultants. These proportions reflect the availability of professionals on the online platform. Each professional receives one of four message types. There's a broad message that asks about the pros and cons of the professional's field. There's a narrow message that asks whether work-life balance is a concern in the professional's field. There's a second narrow message that asks whether competitive culture is a concern in the professional's field. Finally, there's a factual message that asks about the minimum billable hours requirements uh, for a lawyer at a large law firm. And this question is asked, asked of lawyers only. The broad question is intended to isolate whether career attributes are differentially highlighted to male students versus female students. As I mentioned in the introduction, we focus on two career attributes that have been shown in the literature to differentially affect the labor market choices of women relative to men, work-life balance and competitive culture. One reason why professionals may differentially highlight work-life balance and competitive culture to female students is that they perceive that female students could care more about these issues. The narrow messages are intended to address this. So here in the narrow messages, we're able to isolate whether conditional on bringing up a specific concern regarding work-life balance or competitive culture, gender differences in responses persist. Finally, in the factual message, we would like to ascertain whether the accuracy of information provided to male and female students differs. All messages emphasize that the student is not seeking a job, is simply seeking information regarding the professional's field. After the students send messages, we ask the students to provide us with the responses that they receive and just the initial responses. We tell the students that after they receive an initial response from a professional, they are free to follow up if they choose to do so. And we will not ask any detailed information regarding these follow-up interactions. The fact that the students share their initial responses with us allows us to study informal interactions that are typically unobservable to researchers. Using these responses, we analyze whether student gender affects response rates, the specific career attributes that are mentioned, the overall message content using natural language processing tools, and the tone of the message using both sentiment analysis and student evaluations. In many ways, our study resembles a traditional correspondence study in which a researcher sends fictitious resumes to employers in order to estimate the effect of various job applicant characteristics on callback rates. In our study, we maintain tight control regarding the message that is sent, and student characteristics are orthogonal to professional characteristics. In contrast to a traditional correspondence study, our study incorporates real students who genuinely want career information, and we ask them to send messages to real professionals. By incorporating real students, we're able to resolve one issue of traditional correspondence studies, which is that employers' time is being wasted. Since these students are genuinely interested in this career information, they are not wasting professionals' time. There is, of course, a cost of incorporating real students. We as researchers cede complete control over student attributes. This means that other student characteristics may be correlated with student gender and may indeed confound the effect of student gender on the responses that they receive. 
The online setting that we're utilizing serves to mitigate the concern that other student characteristics are confounding the effect of student gender. And we also take several steps to mitigate this concern. First, on the platform, we ask students to restrict their profiles to have minimal information. The information that is visible on the platform is the student's first name and last initial, the university that they're currently attending, the major that they're currently pursuing, as well as their expected graduation year. We control for all of these observable characteristics in the regression. In addition, we test the robustness of our results to the inclusion of additional student characteristics that are not directly observed on the platform, but could potentially be observed elsewhere online. Finally, since we're interested in the effect of student gender on the information that they receive, we restrict the analysis to students whose names clearly convey their gender. So now let's jump into the results. So the first question is, do professionals respond to these student messages? And the answer is yes. Students receive between five and 21 responses. The overall response rate is 12%, and there's quite a lot of heterogeneity depending on the question type. So the broad question that asks about the pros and cons of the professional's field has the lowest response rate at 10%. The two narrow questions that ask whether work-life balance and competitive culture are concerns in the professional's field have the highest response rate at 14%, and the factual question is in between at 11%. Next, we can analyze whether there are gender differences in the responses, in the responses that students receive. And we'll do so by question type. First, we ask whether the response rates to the broad question differ by student gender. We run the following specification. The dependent variable is whether a student receives a response to a particular message that they send, and the independent variables are whether the student is female, as well as some controls, which I'll get into in just a moment. In our baseline specification, we include other controls just for message characteristics. That is, the time and the date that the message was sent and the field of the professional that the message was sent to. We observe that response rates to male and female students are very similar. When we add in student characteristics that are directly observed on this online platform, the coefficient on student female is virtually unmoved. Finally, when we add in other student characteristics that are potentially observed by the professional elsewhere online, we observe that response rates to male and female students remain very similar. We next delve into whether the content of responses to the broad question differ by student gender. In particular, we analyze whether professionals differentially highlight work-life balance issues to female students relative to male students. We run the following specification where the dependent variable is an indicator for whether the response includes a mention of a work-life balance issue and the independent variables remain the same as the previous specification. Across all specifications, we find that female students are substantially more likely than male students to hear about work-life balance. Using the specification in column two, which controls for student characteristics that are directly observed by professionals on this platform, we estimate that work-life balance is mentioned nearly twice as much to female students as it is to male students. So what happens when a student asks specifically about work-life balance and whether it is a concern in the professional's field. To answer this, we can turn to the response rates to the narrow work-life balance question. Here we observe that women receive substantially more responses to the work-life balance question relative to men. 
using the specification from column two, which controls for student characteristics that are directly observed on the platform, we estimate that women receive 25% more responses to the work-life balance question relative to men. And when we look at the content of the work-life balance responses, we observe that these responses tend to increase student concerns regarding work-life balance in the professional's field. Student evaluations of the responses indicate that 51% of messages make students more concerned, 28% do not cause them to update either way, and 22% make them less concerned about work-life balance in the professional's field. To paraphrase some examples of responses that the students received, in response to whether work-life balance is a concern in law, one lawyer responded, it's definitely a valid concern. Your schedule will not be your own. You will not have your evenings, weekends, or vacations. In-house tends to be better in terms of weekends and vacations, but it is still very demanding. In response to whether work-life balance is a concern in management consulting, one consultant responds, Yes, would expect between 60 to 80 hours of work per week and very low predictability Monday through Thursday on hours. Things change rapidly. Weekends tend to be open though. When we analyze whether there are gender differences in the content of responses to the work-life balance question, we find that if anything, the responses to female students tend to be more likely to confirm that work-life balance is a concern relative to the responses to male students, although this difference is not statistically significant. Consistent with our findings that work-life balance issues are differentially highlighted to female students relative to male students, when we analyze the factual question, we find suggestive evidence that women are more likely to receive a response, and this is a response to a question that seeks information about the minimum billable hours requirements in a legal job at a large law firm. In addition, when students receive a response to this question, women are told a higher minimum billable hours requirement relative to men. We also study whether a career's competitive culture is differentially emphasized to female students relative to male students and we find few gender differences there, either in the rates of bringing up competitive culture in the broad question or in the response rates to the specific competitive culture question. While we focus our experimental design and our analysis on work-life balance and competitive culture, we can also analyze whether there are general differences in the responses that male and female students receive. Using natural language processing tools, preliminary results show that responses to male and female students utilize different distributions of words. Using sentiment analysis, we're able in preliminary results to show that the responses that female students receive use a lower fraction of positive words relative to the responses that male students receive. Interestingly, both of these gender differences in word usage and in positive sentiment is driven by answers to the work-life balance question. In ongoing work, we seek to understand the roots of these gender differences in responses as well as their implications. For example, we're currently working on investigating whether the extra information on work-life balance that women receive crowds out other potentially useful information. In addition, we're investigating whether there is heterogeneity in the responses um, that students receive by professional characteristics, including the professional's gender as well as their age. In this paper, we study whether student gender affects the information that students receive about careers. We find that the responses that students receive to questions about various career paths do indeed differ by student gender. 
female students receive nearly twice as many mentions of work-life balance issues, even when they are not asking specifically about work-life balance. When students ask specifically about work-life balance, female students are more likely than male students to receive a response. To our knowledge, this is the first study to be able to isolate the role of gender in information acquisition. These information gaps could be particularly pernicious because there's an element of Nydean uncertainty. Students may not even know that certain career attributes exist prior to making their decisions as to which career to enter. And we have some suggestive evidence that this information that students receive matters. 95% of students say that their career preferences change as a result of the study. In future work, we plan to investigate whether these information gaps are potentially early drivers of occupational segregation by gender. Thanks very much for listening. Please feel free to send any questions or comments to the email addresses on the screen.